Hello everyone, today we are going to present to you the chronology of events, central banking in the Philippines. I am the first speaker. Welcome, this is Lemon Shang Mihas. Let's begin in 1900s. The Act Number no. 52 was passed by the first Philippine Commission placing all banks under the Bureau of Treasury. The insular treasurer was authorized to supervise and examine banks and banking activities. February 1929, the Bureau of Banking under the Department of Finance took over the task of banking supervision. In 1939, a bill establishing a central bank was drafted by Secretary of Finance Manuel Rojas and approved by the Philippine Legislature. However, the bill was returned by the U.S. government without action to the Commonwealth government. 1946, a joint Philippine-American Finance Commission was created to study the Philippine currency and banking system. The commission recommended the reform of the monetary system, the formation of a central bank, and the regulation of money and credit. The charter of the Central Bank of Guatemala was chosen as the model of the proposed Central Bank Charter. In August 1947, a Central Bank Council was formed to review the Commission's report and prepare the necessary legislation for implementation. It was in February 1948 that President Manuel Rojas submitted to Congress a bill establishing the Central Bank of the Philippines defining its powers in the administration of the monetary and banking system, amending pertinent provisions of the administrative code with respect to the currency and the Bureau of Banking and for other purposes. June 15, 1948, the bill was signed into law as Republic Act No. 265, the Central Bank Act, by President Elpidio Quirino. Now, to continue, I will pass you to my partner. So, hello, good day everyone. This is Sherry Pearl Mias and I'm going to continue the discussion. So, in January 3, 1949, with Honorable Miguel Cuaderno Sr. as the first governor, the CBP's tasks and responsibilities were directed by the broad policy objective set forth in Republic Act No. 265, notably in regard to economic development and the maintenance of internal and foreign monetary stability. On November 1972, to make the CBP more flexible to changing economic situations, Presidential Decree No. 72 revised Republic Act No. 265. The major purpose of the CBP, according to PD No. 72, is to maintain local and international monetary stability. Furthermore, the CBP's jurisdiction was broadened to cover not just banking system oversight but also financial system regulation. Let's move on to January 1981. With the issuing of Presidential Decree No. 1771, more adjustments were made to modernize and reinforce the financial system, including raising the CBP's capitalization from 10 million pesos to 10 billion pesos. So, in 1986, Executive Order No. 16 changed the composition of the Monetary Board in order to improve government monetary and fiscal policies, coherence, and coordination. So, on July 3, 1993, the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, or the BSP, which replaced the Central Bank of the Philippines, CBP, was established by a Republic Act No. 7653. And lastly, on February 14, 2019, the Amendment to Republic Act No. 7653, Republic Act No. 11211, was passed. The BSP's ability to maintain price stability and financial system stability has been strengthened by the Charter revisions. And that's it for the chronological list of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas history. Thank you so much for watching and God bless us all.